I've been using Cinema 4D for a while now, and through the years of experience I collected some tips and tricks that can help improve my workflow and make my work more efficient. And today I want to share with you my tips and tricks for Cinema 4D. Let's get started with tip number one. Alright, let's create new sphere. Let's make it smaller and also I want to decrease amount of segments to 16 to make it low poly and also I want to change type from standard to hexahedron like this. And this is what I use too often for the simulation and all other stuff and I want to save this as preset. And now I'm going to show you how to do that. It's pretty simple. All we have to do now is go to this custom tab here my click here and save as preset. I'm gonna give it a name like this and also I can use this as default but I don't wanna do this. I wanna save this just a preset and hit OK. OK and this will pop up our asset browser. Let's close it and now if I want to create new sphere I can use this preset. It's super handy and what's cool about this technique that it works with all geometry, with all splines even with materials. Okay, this one is super cool. And for example, I have this cloner with a bunch of uh, spheres and I want to apply a cloth simulation. And if I hit play, nothing really happens because my cloth is supposed to be on top of this cloner. But what if I want to have control of these uh, spheres and I want to make this editable? And right now I have a bunch of uh, spheres, 125 spheres, and each of these spheres has cloth object. And to adjust all these settings, I need every time select this cloth text and do some adjustments, for example, make them as balloon. And this is really annoying if I click somewhere else, I need to select them once again, and it takes a lot of time, especially when you deal with dynamic you always need to be able to do some adjustments. And I'm gonna show you how to do this easily. So I'm gonna make Shift C and let's find Select. And we have a new uh, thing called Selection. Let's hit this Selection. It works super simple. Just make double click on this Selection object here and this will select everything we set here. But what if you want to control half of these uh, spheres with one selection and other half with other. Let's select for example this one, hit shift C and make new selection. Let's call it 01. Okay, now double click here and I see where I finished my selection. And now I need to select the rest of them. Okay, like this, shift C, selection and rename it to 02. And basically I can easily switch between the first selection and the second. Okay, I have pretty basic scene here and for example I want to place something on the table. And usually how it works, you create, let's say, new sphere, let's make it smaller, like 4, and we use these handles to adjust its position. And often it's not that convenient because you have to adjust all these handles, move this object left and right, and it takes a lot of time to place in the specific spot. I'm gonna show you the easiest way. For example, I wanna place something inside of this pot uh, right here. And to do that, I need to select this pot, or I think it's better to select these greens. And it's important to see where its axis located. For example, I can switch to Access Tool, make it a little bit higher, for example, like this. And right now, if I um, select these greens, I can create new sphere and I will hold Ctrl key and hit the sphere. And this sphere will create exactly in this spot. Right now, it's way too big. Let's make it smaller, for example, 5. And as you can see, this sphere is centered exactly where axis of this object is located. Also, if you want to place something inside of this carpet, for example, uh, I can do the same, select this carpet and let's create a new figure and I will hit Ctrl and create this figure and this will place exactly on this carpet. 
Right, I have this nice drunk astronaut animation here and what if I want to reverse this animation? It's pretty difficult to do by hand, so if we expand this timeline, if we see all keyframes, there are many of them, it's really difficult to do some edits manually. But I'm gonna show you how to reverse this animation super easy. And to do that we are going to function, move scale tool, and in scale, instead of 1 we need to set minus 1 and hit OK. And right now our animation is reversed and shifted on the left side and we need to fix it. Simply drag all keyframes like this and let's take a look. Yeah, everything works nice. What if I want to place this walking astronaut onto the table? Right now he is so big, but I want to make him smaller and place him on this table. And to do that I need to scale him down. If I'm gonna select all our astronaut uh, bones and the whole rig and I will scale it down, you see we have these uh, problems that everything is glitching and we have this huge distortion. So it's super simple. We need to copy this astronaut into a new scene. Let's create a new scene. Let's place him here and let's make him smaller. And to do that we are going to edit scale project. And right now we can uh, do either increase the current scale or we can target scale much smaller, for example 0.1. Hit OK. We can compare this to the box. So this is a box with uh, 2 meters and 2 meters and this is tiny astronaut. So basically let's copy this guy and let's place him straight to the scene. As you can see he is super tiny and we can move this guy somewhere here. And let's take a look. Okay, I have this pretty basic setup here. So basically this is a meter with uh, two objects and I have to reach the body text on these objects and collider body on the plane. So basically a meter generate this uh, object with the dynamic. And I have this nice animation. But the problem here, I cannot scrub through and go back because this is dynamic and we need to cache it. And there is no cache options for the emitter. I'm gonna show you how to make it more handy. And to do that, I'm going to create cloner object. And right now, instead of emitter, I will put these two objects with dynamic into a cloner object. I need to set up object and drag and drop this emitter. Cloner object has caching option. Make a right click on it, MoGraph and MoGraph cache. And we can hit bake and let's preview and everything works fine. We can scrub through back and forth and everything is cached. Alright, I have some basic clock setup. I created this clock with the animated arrow and this arrow is animated by the coordinates. It's just rotating. What if I want to make this uh, animation posterized and to replicate like a uh, clock seconds effect to make it click, click, click. And to do that there is super easy way. We need to select this arrow and we need to apply tag called track modifier. Just type modifier or track and apply this tag here and let's enable the preview and nothing really happens because we need to change mode type from spring to posterization. And even after this nothing happened because we need to increase frame step. For example, let's make it 5. And as you can see, we skip like every 5 frames. And right now we have something similar to clock animation. And we can play with these values, depends what you want to achieve. I've downloaded this animation from the internet and here's the problem. These two lamps are baked as one piece, so this is basically one geometry here. But what if I want to split them into two different pieces? Let's go to model mode, select object you want to separate into different pieces and we are going to tools, convert and convert polygon islands to objects. And we break everything into different pieces, so each of these objects 
is uh, separated from each other. And now we can go to uh, rectangle selection, select everything from here and move out from this null object and we can put it into another null and we can move it as separate pieces and it's super handy and by doing this you can separate any object into different uh, separated pieces. I have the super basic scene and let's say I want to light this sphere here and it's my main object in this composition and I want to light it somehow. And usually what are you doing? You just create new light, let's say area light, let's move it on the side and we start rotating it to find a better position, play with its size, for example like this. And it takes a lot of time to just adjust the rotation to find the perfect spot. It's not that convenient, I'm gonna show you a better method to do this. And let's create new null object and let's call it light. And this light will represent our center point where we wanna target our light. And for our light, make a right click here, animation, and select target. And inside of target object, let's place our light. Okay, and immediately you see the result. And now if I change the position of this null object, our light will follow it. This is super handy and now I can just duplicate this area light, let's switch to world view and move it on the other side and as you can see both lights are connected to this uh, light target and let's say I want to light something else so I simply can move this target and light some other things in our scene. What if you want to place this top object on top of this terrain or this mountain? And it's a pretty difficult task, to be honest. Uh, usually people would go with a collision deformer or you can create cloth, make this as cloth and to do some simulations. But none of this will work with this kind of geometry because it's pretty difficult. And not all of these points are connected, but I have a better solution for you. Let's place this top object, our cloth, into a null object. All we need to do now is simply add projection modifier. Let's bring it into our scene and let's place it into a null object. And in this projection we have target object, in our case it's gonna be terrain. So simply drag and drop this landscape into target object like this. And all we have to do now is simply set correct orientation. In this case it's gonna be minus y, like this, and everything placed exactly on top of this uh, mountain. But right now everything is uh, intersecting, this is not what I wanna have here, therefore I can use offset, for example 0.2, maybe 0.5, like this, and everything looks super cool. I can also use this projection tool and project splines. And what's cool about this technique that we have everything procedural, so basically I can change and adjust any settings I want into this uh, spline and as well as in this cloth. Alright, that's it for today, I hope you find this video useful, please let me know in the comments what tip you will implement into your workflow and what was helpful for you. And also, if you have your tips, please don't forget to share them in the comments, the whole community will appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time, peace.